Maggie, I'm so interested to talk to you about Derek Jarman. I poured over Derek Jarman's diaries, um, the book, and in the introduction, there I see your name because it says that the title Modern Nature came from Maggie Hambling. Do you remember the moment that you uttered those words to Derek Jarman? Yes. It was at a private view in London and Derek came up full of enthusiasm uh, for his new place. And then he looked at me very intensely and said, it was nature, nature. And then he described the power station just behind it and all of that. And so I thought for a minute and I said, ah, Derek, you've discovered modern nature. And that's why he used it for the book. Oh, it's fantastic. So where did you meet? Were you at art school together? No, he was at the Slade and a couple of years above me. So were you going to see each other's studios? Were you looking at each other's exhibitions? Were you sort of looking at the same things happening? Or was it not as self-conscious as that? Not really. I mean, there was a sort of fizz about, and pop art was what was in. Mm. And I remember Derek's big painting being in the Young Contemporaries when it was at the Tate. But mostly with Derek, it was, it was the parties. I remember charades with, and I was Lester Piggott, and John Sainsbury was Eve. And I made him have a rose through his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. Things like that. I mean, there was always a fizz about Derek, do you know? So, Maggie, you're one of my favourite portrait painters, and after Derek passed away, you painted his portrait. Yeah. Had you painted him before he died? No. So this painting was the sort of the portrait that you had done of him? Well, you see, however long it had taken Derek to die, it was still the most enormous shock when he died. Mm. And so I was compelled to try and make that mm. painting of him. And, I mean, Derek sort of confronting you but sailing mm. in that particular blue of his last film, which yeah. I, I thought blue was his greatest film. Me too. I think that was so, so special and it's, you can come back to it. So Prospect Cottage is a huge part of Derek's legacy, not just in the art that he made, but in this extraordinary place that he created in, in the most unusual of places. What did Prospect Cottage mean to him? He sort of found himself there. I mean, in London, well, you know how London is. It's all a huge rush the whole time mm. to get things done, and he was always trying to get money to make his films, and, and there was a lot more chaos. I think he, Prospect Cottage, he found himself and he found peace and the making of that extraordinary garden. Mm. I mean, who would, who would have thought that you could make a garden in shingle? But, I mean, that's part of his his originality. Yeah, that kind of boundless creativity and the, sort of the will, the mm. will to want to keep doing that. I remember there was a wonderful thing in one of his obituaries that Derek had said, it wasn't that straight people were normal, merely rather common. <laughs> <laughs>